call to order at 537. We have a quorum. Um, would anybody like to volunteer to take notes? If not, I am I can open up the doc and do it. I volunteer to do it, but I lost a set of minutes <laughs> from two months ago when I thought I sent them. They went into the ether. I'm going to take notes too. Okay. <laughs> minutes will be very concise. If I do them, that will be six pages long. So, yeah. So, many people might prefer to say hi to them. So, we're all present today, so, yeah. All right. So, between Booker and myself, we will get them done. All right, we have no members of the public here. Um, so the first order of business would be to accept the October minutes and the January minutes, and I would suggest, uh, I would um, entertain a motion to consider both at once. So the October minutes don't exist, those are the minutes. Oh, you didn't I send, took, okay. You I thought I sent them and I deleted Okay, I see. Now I'm catching up to speed, thank you, Booker. Um, Okay, so we, I will accept a motion to um, accept the January minutes. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any corrections or changes, questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Same? Okay. Great. Um, did you all get a chance to read the hand hit the letter to Mayor Narcoitz? Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we will, let's talk about that. Um, did I make a fair, um, Representation of our conversation, having slept on it for a couple of weeks, and doing really, things we would change. It was a really wonderful format. How did you get the idea? It sort of, here's the level of interest we would have. But, I mean, it's a very clear way of doing it. And, um, I think it will make it really straightforward mm -hmm. for the mayor and committees to be able to review our thoughts. Yeah, I hope it will be useful for them. My point is direct up to us was actually a little bit vague. So this is helpful, but we prioritize mm -hmm. and then and then um, what our role mm -hmm. what our role would be. I wonder if we need to qualify this by adding like we're working under assumption that um, that our recommendations are made independent of any knowledge of like the resources of any script. This is just purely based on. I'll just. I, I just don't know. If we need to kind of qualify this something as a, a recommendation by saying that they're kind of made independent of any sort of consideration of you know amount of resources available and um, you know whatever the the current. Um, you know, developments are, mm -hmm. so this is just purely based on our, very aspirational. Well, I thought that was clear. Okay. But, but maybe like in the... I actually thought beginning of the year? document sort of suggests yes, that. Yes, it suggests that. But and it doesn't, it's not exactly. It's sort of a way of, your way of saying speed to, imp to implement sort of suggested that, that to me that has to do with finances and how complex the issues are. So I, mean, I would not be opposed to being more specific about not understanding where the resources come from. But mm -hmm. I think that's been reasonably well implied by yeah. okay. implement, the, the implementation model. I think always.
I had a few comments. Great. Yeah, okay. Um, first of all, I think it's fantastic. I really also agree that I like the way you did it, direct impact, speed to implement, you know, what the Human Rights Commission role would be. I mm -hmm. just had a few specific things to suggest. Um, in one thing, the, uh, you know, we, the supporting the multidiscipline de-escalation team, mm -hmm. where it says the role of Human Rights Commission is none, mm -hmm. I think the role could be advocate because to me it's a human rights issue mm -hmm. to have people trained well enough I mean and you could be specific if you think it's important but like I think a situation where this could result in something terrible happening if somebody is mentally ill and they get into a tussle and I think that people mm -hmm. have a, a right to be cared for in a way that they'll, they won't get hurt so so in that way, I think it is kind of related to human rights. So that was that one. Mm -hmm. Should I keep going? Yes, please. And then the next one, the day center, I thought the sentence that says we affirm the lack of sufficient resources could be deleted because, I'll tell you why, because, um, I mean, I think it's, self-evident that we're saying it's not enough if we're suggesting a day center. Mm -hmm. And it sort of like kind of puts down the, the things that are being done, which are a lot, and you go into detail about that in the next sentence. So if you don't want to take it out, I would just okay. move it be, behind, underneath the one where you talk about we recognize how blah, blah. Okay. So, and so that was that. And then, um, and at the end of that one where it says, near the heart of downtown that could be repurposed for this proposal. I thought maybe we should add in, in working with the human service agency to create it, because I don't think the city can do that on its own. Right. And then I have just a few more. One is that um, the low threshold housing where it says we have no wet drop-in shelter, I think we should just de-jargon that and just say we have no shelter or that accepts people in any state of intoxication. Dean Turgeon, is that a, that's a new verb. Well, I just <laughs> <laughs> <It's> appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's just a little typo in the next one. It's, it's it should be ITS, not IT plus for yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. In what paragraph? Uh, creating its advisory board. Uh -huh. And then the only final one is the day labor one. Mm -hmm. I thought we could bring that back to the um, International Declaration because Article 23 actually says everyone has the right to work. Mm -hmm. So, um, and where it says role of Human Rights Commission, none, it could be advocacy, because yep. that is, you know, in the International Declaration. Yep. And then uh, the only thing, other thing I want to say is I thought you did a really good job with this code of ethics. It was a delicate one. Yes. And um, I thought you just nailed it okay, in our discussion. And, when we were talking about it, I wasn't sure what you were going to come up with. And I really like I like what you said. Good. Thank you. <coughs> I was just going to um, second what everybody else is saying, which is that it's just a beautifully done job, the way that you presented it. So we do have a role in every, every option that we support, right? Yeah. So, yeah, can we just do it? So, we would assist and amplify to create a public message. Mm -hmm. We would not be involved in giving a fund. We would not be involved with transparency technology. Um, what we use 
for supporting a multidisciplinary de-escalation team. Did you want us to be advocates for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's as important as creating a community center. Mm -hmm. And I think we can make the rest of the argument that it's, it's a human rights issue. Okay. And we would still, we think it's the impact of the storage units is high, but we would not have a role. And advocacy around housing. Do we want to leave unclear for the creating a youth advisory board? Yeah, and, well, I'd rather say I don't think we would have a role. Yeah, I mean, I, that, that would be fine with me. If I would be not helped with all the downtown storage units, multidisciplinary de-escalation team, uh, in addition to advocacy, might we have a, a role in educating the community? Yeah. I mean, and I guess in terms of the, in terms of the, the, um, storage units, mm -hmm. Article 17 says everyone has a right to own property alone as well as in association with others and no one shall arbitrarily deprive of this property. So I guess that could support that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, question that I had is um, I wrote this in the order that these proposals were in the mayor's report. Um, we can reorder them if we want in terms of priorities. priorities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. What? Mm -hmm. High impact? Or so, so, yeah, so that would be our next piece of discussion is what would, how would we prioritize these. Well, I mean, if you think about what we're here to, to, to kind of like reflect on things in terms of human rights, and maybe we should prioritize them as a battle. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you mean? What do you mean? Um, in terms of organization. What? In terms of organizing this? Yeah. Well, if you think about what, how, how we want to prioritize them, either we could do it like what's the most oh. direct impact, what's the most low-hanging fruit. You know, there's lots of ways you can organize something, but maybe what we should do is think about doing it in terms of what's the most um, related to human rights. Since we're, we're the Human Rights Commission. So shelter. I mean, what? I, I don't know. 
shelter liberty. I mean, I think it's actually quite hard to think about. Or, yeah. By ranking it by human rights, which is most important. Yeah. I mean, I think using that lens, things that would fall to the bottom would be uh, the creating technology to make donations. Or setting up a youth advisory board, those would be lower. Right. In rates. Yeah, to me, what would rise to the top would be like life and liberty, like the multi de escalation team. You can see right up there. I wonder if the police do liaise with emergency services. I have to assume. They do. They're not. Yeah. Maybe we just group them, not rank them. what the city can actually do. Exactly. And I really don't think that that's something the city can do. No, that's certainly not a major I agree. I was trying to ask about that. Like, should we be concerned about that? You know, yeah. because we actually, there's a lot we don't know. Even the speed of implementation, we, we just don't know. Sure. So I think we're doing a service by saying, for instance, not having the, um, I think it's helpful to talk about what you, we don't think you need to do. Mm -hmm. And so sort of saying that code of ethics for givers and receivers either needs more work or should be done. Mm -hmm. that, that's like, if I was the mayor, that would be the thing I would find less useful. Everything else, I think, is sort of something that would be good to do. Um, I I'm actually would propose that we keep it in the order that you have it, because it was the way it was given to us. Because I'm not sure that the city can do any of these things. Any of them. Mm -hmm. um, except they would also go through the process of what's low lying through. Mm -hmm. And they, but you know, I'm not a policy wonk. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't get how, to, I don't know how to think about that. Yeah, I kind of think we should leave it away. <laughs> because it's just too hard to prioritize. Mm -hmm. And they might be misunderstood. And this is very clear. If one me our response meets what he laid out. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think where we are is that we'll keep it in this order. I've made notes on the changes um, that you all have suggested. It is better for these changes. And would you like to see it again before I send it to the so. yeah. If anybody wants to see it, send it to you before I send it. Okay. Right. Now we'll send it to the mayor and everyone. Can you still copy the council president? Yeah, I mean, I was wondering what he's going to do with it. I was thinking maybe he would give it to the city council, but yeah. And make sure that you all get CC number too. Great, thank you. Okay. Okay, now, the um, enabling language in the city charter that says who we are and what we do, 
doesn't necessarily say how we do it. Uh, like other city committees, there's been a chair, vice chair, co-chair, that kind of traditional model of leadership. Um, but I wanted to invite this conversation about what is the How would we like to organize leadership on, for this commission? We know that there's turnover. Um, and we know that we're all busy. So what are the what are the leadership gifts that you all have that you have not been able to bring yet? And how would how would you like to be able to do that? what makes sense, what's most efficient. Any or so those are other questions. Mm. Well I think at the very least we could move to a like year term. If we if we think that we want to keep it as chair, have a chair as opposed to like a monthly rotating, mm -hmm. maybe we should do it by year. What do you see as the benefits of that work? Uh, because you get to practice, mm -hmm. but you know there's an end.
shared leadership. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that is really something I'm comfortable doing. You know, um, during the deadlines, for submitting agendas and, and minutes, and coordinating and communicating with um, within this group. Um, but I also wondered if you guys would be comfortable talking about um, how long you intend to stay on the commission because I know that there's some terms expired and you know with the city council for instance there's, there's so much turnover it seems like it seems really really critical to have um, to have some key members stay on you know to, to kind of convey the institutional knowledge and to kind of orient the new members and um, so I, I know my term just started, um, Karen just uh, um, So, you know, going forward, um, you know, we, I don't know if we're looking at, you know, a smaller group of people. Um, I haven't heard about any new recruits, but... Yeah. So you mean you're, you're wondering what... Go, have to go around? To, yeah, maybe hard to make a commitment to about you know, Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I think my term is up in June, and I was going to let, like, step off in June. Um, but I would like, I hope that they um, find someone, like, knowing that that, I mean, I let them know, mm -hmm. and I hope they work on finding someone. So that there's not a gap. So. How years have you been serving them? Um, five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, fi I finished out somebody's term, and then I, I react twice, I think. So if I do get accepted, then that'll. So I won't know until probably April or May ish. Mm. Once I get back. You're flying around here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I feel bad I haven't sort of um, done as much, you know, sort of stepped forward more. And I think I, I've got some health things and I had to do some very intense physical therapy in Boston to go to Boston to learn how to do it. And um, so if, it, if there hadn't been such a dearth of people, I probably would have stepped off. Mm -hmm. I can't remember how many years I've done. Maybe three or four, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, I mean, this didn't seem the time because right. we need to have a quorum. So, but I don't feel, you know, it's not a great time for me to be, because mm -hmm. I already work. Um, so it's not a great time for me to step up, but I'm very aware. I, I feel that you guys have done a great deal that I appreciate. Um, and for a long time, I've been longing to see Morales check. <laughs> such a good leadership quality. I, you, you take us in such good kind of things. And I'm not saying that dissing the rest of you, but. Without you, you couldn't do anything. Cause you know, or... mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm very. I mean, it definitely, it's, it's very tight for us all. And one of my questions is, are there more people in the pipeline? Is it? And I don't know how they recruit. Mm -hmm. I think I'll check and meet everybody. I think we need to be more proactive in recruiting. Yes. Um, did you want to say your future? No. Um, no, I don't have I don't have plans to step off the commission. I, um, you know, I plan to at least be here another two years. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing I was wondering is is, is it maybe you know the answer to this? It's in the bylaws that, that there's supposed to be eight members. 
Missions are really good, but they sometimes don't say, well, I don't see what I would bring to that. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm a, uh, the Human Rights Commission prior to when I joined, until it changed, was sort of this more dynamic. It, well, it was involved in other things. And seemed to be more exciting, both for good and not good reasons. And um, 
you know, and I don't know if that's the, so I don't know if it's sort of what we do or how do we market that or is there a way that we are more involved in some way with assisting the city with decision making um, as opposed to our trying to come up with things that we can be doing. I, Some thoughts along those lines as well. Yeah. Um, you know, there was a lot of controversy over the fact that this body does not have legal authority. Um, but we we should still have more authority. But this but that requires us to be visible and almost to earn it in some way. And that um, we really I feel like the only way to do that is to really um, we need to collaborate more with other organizations and groups that are doing work in human rights. Um, since we have to work with this initiate things, um, you know, we need to be more openly, advoc uh, openly advocating and, um, you know, I don't know, through, you know, writing and you know, supporting resolutions and ordinances. Mm -hmm. We need to attend meetings of other groups and invite them to our meetings. Um, I, maybe we need, and also, I'm mean, recruiting new members that maybe have that, already have that disability and those connections and the, you know, the, just the knowledge of the community. Which I know I don't have as a board resident. Um, so it would be great if there was, we could find more dynamic people who have the, the time and interest and energy, you know, to um, availability to, to do this. source of frustration for me. I do not I feel the same. It's difficult for for me to promote this or to promote this body because I I can only talk about I can talk about past activities. But you know going forward we have what are we doing this year? Uh, there's We talked about um, in the report on um, that we're sending back to the mayor our responses, and we talk about our role being advocacy. One of my questions is yes, how, how much? I mean, how do we really do that more than in this letter? How do we? How do we really advocate? Well, go so like like we went to the charter commission meeting, we went to the city council meeting. So we go, we support the legislation that is that is supportive of human rights. It's one way, we write letters to the editor. It's a way of engaging with the greater public and to like to educate them about human rights. Education, yeah. right? So we yeah. have. That is important to continue.
time would be to do that. Um, but you know, I, I think it would be important work to do something we might look at in a more specific way. Because um, you went to the, well, for instance, you went to the yeah. state meeting mm -hmm. um, and started doing that kind of work. Yeah. And you also went to, I thought, the disability community. Yeah, I did. Because mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a, another set of letters about how hard it is to get around mm -hmm. with a wheelchair in today's paper and mm -hmm. sort of calling out business that wasn't doing much. Um, I wonder if we should then um, try to recruit people who are already there for <coughs> meetings, rather than have out for a time that we don't have currently. Um, can, you, can you give an example of that? Um, and I don't have the networks here, but I, um, I think we should ask around. Um, I mean, I don't need specific you know. names, but like what? Right. Um, more than come join us and you can help shape the shape the agenda for the coming year. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I'm going back to, I just happened to have cleaned out a folder today before I came and um, I kept in it this old document and it, what it says here, authorities and responsibilities. The Human Rights Commission shall act to promote human rights in the city of Northampton. The commission shall advocate advocate and be an information resource for the rights guaranteed according to state, local, and federal law on the basis of race, color, gender, physical, mental ability, all that. Um, the mayor and the city council may refer issues pertaining to human rights to the commission for review and recommendation. The commission may organize programs and events to educate about human rights. The Human Rights Commission is an advisory multiple member body. But it also says a quorum is a majority of all voting members. Right, and um, in the, I, I do have the charter pulled up here, the administrative code. It says there shall be a Human Rights Commission consisting of nine members. So, there shall. Yeah, but if it says a quorum is a majority of all voting members, here we are, six voting members. That's, I mean, like, I guess that could be read a few different ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I will need to yeah. But the interesting thing is, um, this also says that um, the Human Rights Commission shall elect a chair and vice chair serve one year terms. Where does it say that? Well, I have this document that says the bylaws of the Human Rights Commission. Like when that was when, when. It says 426 2016. 
Oh, those are my... So, some previous board adopted these. But it says all these other things that aren't happening also, like um, like well, actually, somewhere it said that a vacancy has to be filled within three months. <laughs> oh, I think I saw that. <laughs> yeah, those policies are that's not on our website. Uh huh. This, the, this, the, yeah. It, it also says that we're supposed to functions of the Human Rights Commission to hold at least two annual events with the general public per fiscal year. Wow. Again, yeah, aspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here it is. The Human Rights Commission shall actively recruit and recommend citizens when said seats are vacancies, and said vacancy seats must be filled within 60 days. Huh. And it says regular meetings must be at least two hours each month. And that, those were adopted in 2016? Oh. And then everybody left. Okay. We, we may need to change the pilots. I mean, I, I don't remember this, but it's in my notebook. It's in the folder here. Wow. So, uh, Documents online only go back to 2017. Hmm. Well, could you make a copy of that and yeah. mail it around? To sure, I'll make a copy of, 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 of both of these things. This must have been right before I came on then, so maybe I came on in 2016. Yeah, because I don't think I came on until after 2017. Well, I kind of want to compile some of what we've talked about in the last hour into something like a handbook. I would have been helpful to me mm -hmm. you know, because there's no other opportunity for, for unwrapping mm -hmm. or orienting someone. Mm -hmm. A little bit about the history and previous activities. And yeah, the rules, the bylaws, the archive records. How long has it been going on? Right. Commission. 2008 or 9? Oh, really? I thought it was before that. Oh, no, you're right. It was under Mayor Ford. 1990. That document sort of says, okay, our plan now is what, what's the public event we're going to do in the next six months? Well, when it was first established, it was a, a body to which complaints could be brought. Right. It, it was more it was quasi investigative, although it had no authority and no investigative ability either. Right. But it was a place to come to. Yes. And it led to that. I was working in the mayor's office, and it was confusing for people because they would want to bring, you know, my landlord is discriminating against me. Mm -hmm. And the commission really couldn't do anything. So, you know, here's a phone number you can call. So, mm -hmm. people were feeling like they weren't responded to, mm -hmm. understandably. And then it got then it got revised 
when the city charter yes. was revised. Yeah. So was that in 2015-16? No, before that. Just before. 2004. Is that right? During Mayor Higgins' term. But that's an 11-year block. I don't remember. Well, in answer to your question about what the chair does, this is in here. This is this is about the administrative code. Now maybe this isn't in effect anymore, but basically it says this is about all multiple member bodies. So okay. each multiple member body shall annually elect from its membership a chair, vice chair, and clerk, and other officers as deemed necessary. And then it says, oh, the annual election shall occur at the first meeting after July first, and the mayor and city clerk shall be notified. Um, the chair shall, shall preside over all meetings of the multiple member body and is the official representative in all proceedings before the city council and other officials in the city. The vice chair performs the chair's function in, in that sense of the chair. The clerk is responsible for certification of the minutes and observance of the open meeting law. I'll send all of this around. a little bit of a different direction but still in line a little bit with what we were discussing I wonder if every quarter so like every fourth meeting we sent out personal invitations to various commissions um, maybe the police department uh, homeless shelters just various organizations um, and that was every fourth meeting where they came and it was like a personal invitation that was sent out to them that would be a great way for us to hear things that are happening in community concerns, which might help us um, shape what we want to do or things that we want to be in charge of. It's also a great way to collaborate with other people and for them to see the Human Rights Commission and what we do without us having to try to figure out how to do this outside of our regular mm -hmm. um, scheduled mm -hmm. time. And then I wonder if that would assist with bringing in new members as well, because the more, the more people, like when I went to the Disability Commission's meeting, they had three or four mm -hmm. members of the public there, which was really neat to see since we don't typically have members of the public, so I wonder if members of the public from there would attend, want to join, um, and if that would bring more traction, and then if we did it every quarter, mm -hmm. it could be a bit more organized and we'd have enough time in between meetings to kind of decide what we want to do with the information that we gather. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, 
feel like it's just been this constant kind of needing more members. That's my experience. So, so I mean, we did have another sort of initiative, which was the surveys. Yeah. Um, which went so far, but then sort of came up against the wall. In some ways, because I think it was a lot of work, and we weren't quite sure what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that was a third major. I mean, that was a major initiative. Um, I think commercial results mm -hmm. you know, didn't reveal a lot of significant findings. Mm -hmm. But the next step would be to widen the scope um, of the people who do respondents. Um, but yeah, this is, it required a, I think, you know, required really just like mm -hmm. administering in person, mm -hmm. you know, the pride parade, or, you know, collecting the completed surveys from different locations in, in town. Um, and I don't know if we've kind of tapped out at this point. I don't think there was a, was there, how many were there online? Um, I also feel, I also wonder, I mean, if we're going to restart that, I feel like we need to have a conversation about um, maybe redesigning the survey as well, you know, as the, aligning that with, aligning that with our priorities going forward, like what So I, I thought we were doing the survey in order to figure out what our priority should be. We were looking to the survey to give us it would, Yeah, we were hoping it would shape our priority, help but, us shape our priorities. But now, hearing these other documents, I, I'm, and by the way, it was sort of better to be said, here's, here's this survey data that the city has collected. Please help us out with analyzing it for next steps. That, that was felt like a more useful thing. Now I understand why um, Alyssa, Alyssa Klein has sort of been throwing us, here's a project that I think you guys ought to join up and do an educational program. Or, um, now I sort of, because that fits more with what that document says we should be about. Um, and then how do we choose which kinds of programs to pursue. Um, I, I'm not sure that we have the resources to be able to do the questionnaire well, mm -hmm. and that, that's mm -hmm. sort of what I have a lot Well, the other thing is, it's just, I'm not, I feel like, the, it's hard, I think the key, I'm not convinced that the community sees the relevance of it. Mm -hmm. So there's not that much incentive for people to do it. Mm -hmm. But I like what somebody said about collaborating, because there are things we could do, like we could collaborate with the Forbes Library mm -hmm. for a community reading about a book about mm -hmm. you know, this related to human rights issues. That's huh? You should do something more topical. Something. Yeah. Related to the driver's license, camp, not to the driver's license campaign mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. So actually, what we are now, we, we talked about leadership, and now we're on priorities. Right. Let's get right in. We delved yeah. right into that. And then you brought in the next day. And the surveys that we're getting, 166 to mm -hmm. one. Since, well, so we've had a, yeah. had a few since that the, was um, that includes the high school ones. Okay, there's 66 from the high school and 99 in the um, 67 and 99. And the last one was like December 19th. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
we weren't getting a representative. And it's quite a hard amount of information, quite yeah. complex to really yeah. get. And I don't think we have the resources. Yeah. In some ways, it, it feels to me that an, a, um, an incomplete survey probably is more of a disservice than that at all. So, I'm going to make, I'm going to propose, though I'm not yet making a motion, mm -hmm. at our next meeting. It sounds like there are actually guidelines for how we're supposed to do the leadership of this commission. And assuming that that's all correct, that sort of set in stone, and then we have to determine if we really want to follow that and how we want to follow that. Then there's another issue of putting together the orientation and marketing materials, mm -hmm. to use a crass term for what the Human Rights Commission might be about, um, or based on these documents, what we're supposed to be about. And that actually could be a very different marketing thing to say, you know, we, we want people who can help us figure out what kinds of education should we be doing for the mm -hmm. community about human rights issues and helping us choose which issues might be the things we focus on. Um, and see if we can develop that. And I, I mean, I think that's what we've been trying to do, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. Mm -hmm. what, what is it that we've been trying to do? Understand what it is we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it. Oh. By the way, that because that document says what it says about here's how the chair shall work and here's how a report should be done, as, there's some people who think saying the way commissions and committees should work, that they have to have a chair and an elected clerk and everything else is sort of quite supremacist the way of doing things. Yeah, yeah. And there are commissions that sort of say who would like to be the clerk this meeting. Yeah. Who would, that, though it gets diffuse mm -hmm. when somebody deletes the minutes. Off. <laughs> <laughs> that would never happen in this group. Because we get nothing to work. Okay. I lost one too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, and that might change what it means to be chair. Mm -hmm. We sort of have an agreement about rotating things. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as we're able to stay on path. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's a whole other question. You have a question that's sort of related to this whole thing, for, especially for those of you who have been on it longer. Has this sense of sort of the vagueness of the mission always somewhat been there? The, the sort of lack of clarity, the cloudiness? Or has it, a, I mean, it feels to me we've had times of clarity and then we go away from it. Mm -hmm. Times of clarity and go away from it. I'm not, I, I'm not unclear about it. I just think it's hard to figure out what it is you want to do. But given that, I mean, and also, if you are somebody who, like, is, you know, how in the business world or whatever, it's not profitable, they talk about deliverables. Like, we don't have a lot of deliverables here. Um, but I'm not unclear about what, what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be promoting and amplifying human rights and educating the community about state, local, and federal laws that protect human rights. Um, but it seems to me there's a lot of shapes that could take. Because if you think, like, well, laws really aren't the way to do it anyway, attitudes need to change. So then there's a lot of education that can be done to change attitudes. And I think, 
I don't know. Sometimes I think that people feel like it's vague because we don't feel like we're accomplishing anything. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's fair. That's fair. How do we know there's human rights progress anywhere? Anywhere. It comes in trying to it becomes um, part of the norms and culture. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's very difficult to measure what we do, but I don't think we have to. I'm not so concerned about that. As, as long as we. You know, I feel like we. I do want, I do think it's important for us to be relevant to the community. Yeah, I mean, I can say that as a resident of Northampton, not being on this commission, when things happened, and then I opened the paper and saw the Human Rights Commission saying something, I felt like, good, I'm glad somebody's saying something. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Right. You know, like, the need to respond when something awful happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I don't think you can measure that. So I feel it's what, what I agree with what you're saying. I also think that we can see when there's a deterioration, which there certainly has been, I think, nationally in the last however many years, three years. I mean, one might not know how much progress there is until it. So you lose it. Well, until there's certainly diminishment of it. thing is like maybe um, for, if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry, but I, I, that just that laws aren't enough. I mean, not laws are necessary, but they are not enough. So, so the rest of that, like the gap between when you have laws like that protect human rights and like when you have a society that respects it, that's a big gap. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think we operate over both. Yeah. Well, it's why we might it's why we might decide that we take more of an advocacy role in issues like driver's licenses for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, non bathrooms that are universally mm -hmm. accessible. Right, right. Um, but those are actually cutting edge issues. Yeah. Yeah. And from a human rights viewpoint, it's, there are no brainers. Yeah. Um, yeah. But from so there's a need for advocacy. Yeah. About those things. I do have a little thing to report about that. So tell me when I can do that. About which the the driver's licenses. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think we have a, not that we're prepared to really make decisions about priorities. It's no, but I'm aware that you don't want to be chair anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay for now. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. I mean, are, you, are you willing to continue to be chair till July? Um, yeah, because that's what it says we're supposed to. Yeah, yeah fiscal year. Yeah. yeah, actually, that works out perfectly because I'm hoping to start sabbatical in July. So. Okay. Well, so then that puts that on the shelf for a little bit, but then we still have the issue. But yeah, I would like to continue to have the conversation about how we share leadership. I mean, because I, I do, I would rather work with a more diffuse model. Sure. Well, and I guess one thing is somebody else could be vice chair than me. Um, anybody wanted to? You're fit. Well, I feel like we've been really acting as co-chairs. Well, we have to. Yeah. So somebody else can be coaching with you. Are you you ready then? Well, no. Well, I mean, I'm, I don't mind doing it, but I also feel like if we want to have like um, continuity, huh? continuity, if you and a succession plan. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. Building up, like if you know you're going to leave, and somebody else could be learning, because yeah, Cause that wouldn't be me taking over. Right. Okay. So I'm 
more thinking? I'm willing to do that. You are? <laughs> All right. I completely appreciate all you guys have done. I mean, you both have so much sort of history and institutional knowledge about Northampton. Yeah. And you're both very good about getting down to it and just doing it. It's just been wonderful. So, so do we need, uh, so I'd be willing to take on like being secretary so that we don't have to every week, every month, like wonder who's going to do it. At least for the next. Yeah, that month. Yeah. So, do we need to vote on that, or just? I'm not really sure what I just volunteered for. <laughs> <laughs> so, as for, um, or after, after your tenure, or what? Oh, okay. Well, I was thinking that um, I thought what you were volunteering was to be co-chair with Karen. Starting now. She was it okay. starting now or starting, starting in July? Oh, I, I, don't, I thought it was starting now and then I would. I think what, um, yeah, I think what, what you were saying is that if somebody wanted to start that now, then there would be a ramp up. It wouldn't okay. be both Lori leaving her position and me leaving this position at the same time. So they overlap. In July. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that so way it could be more of a learning by doing kind of thing. And um, and how it's uh, Lori has been um, responsible for set getting the agenda set and send it to um, court court in the, the mayor's office on the Friday before mm -hmm. the Friday before our scheduled meetings. Okay. So it needs to be posted 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Mm -hmm. And that happens by sometimes. I send it to Karen, or sometimes I send it to everybody. I just mm -hmm. take the minutes from the previous meeting and the agenda from the previous meeting and see what's going to, and then ask if anybody has anything for the agenda. Okay. And is that something so, you want to keep having a shared responsibility with? That's very helpful for me. Okay. Something that I want to do. I can do it with you the first time next month if you want. Okay. That's great. Um, so yes, let's go, and <laughs> somehow we're almost on time. Um, the driver's license campaign update. Well, so I, um, okay, so I reached out to the worker center and said that and said that we had talked about it and we think it's the right issue, is there anything we can do? And mm -hmm. she said, I reached out to Margaret Sawyer, who's on staff there, and she said, hmm, yes reach out to other towns, HRCs, and get towns to pass resolutions in support and get them to get their reps on board. So our city council already came out in favor of it, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah. we don't need to do that with our city council. What I was wondering is, do you have access to that list of the, pe of the organizations that went to that conference? Or you also went, you both went. I know there was a group, a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know that everybody was on it, but I know there was a Facebook group that people were a part of. It was also there was an email that was I think that's what I was going to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if there was potentially an email sent as well. Yeah. Right before. I mean, like around here, there's a Greenfield Human Rights Commission. I don't know if there's one at Amherst. There's one at Amherst. He's okay. Hampton's starting one. I believe. Oh, okay. The Massachusetts Human Rights Commission. Yes. But. What might be more effective than reaching out to a few here is to reach out to that coalition mm -hmm. and say, do you want to, I mean, because it's a statewide effort. Yes. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. My impression from the conference is that it's just, um, just a couple of volunteers. They mm -hmm. don't have, they don't do a lot of time to update. And it's mostly most of the activities around the Sandal Conference. So that, um, you know, I could I could reach out to the people I know there. Um, the, the facilitator for the panel is the um, he's a 
civil rights lawyer in um, Winchester, I think. So, but it's, I guess it could be something quite simple, like, mm -hmm. you know, Northampton Human Rights Commission in um, January mm -hmm. voted that this is a human rights issue that non-citizens should be able to drive and we support the effort, whatever it is, you know, blah, blah. And then what other human rights commissions want to come out in favor of that or want to support, do you want to join mm -hmm. us or, and get people to sign it? Um, yeah, I just looked up the email from the statewide coalition. I've got dozens of email addresses. Oh, you do? So you could send a mm -hmm. reply all kind of mm -hmm. thing? I mean, we could just keep this simple. Yeah. And, and yeah. just say, we did this. You want to, do you want to do it too? Mm -hmm. um, All right, Lori, do you have proposed language for something for us to vote on that we oh. can vote yeah. on and make the show? Yeah. So, my proposal would be that, wait, you mean proposed language? I pro I, you mean like a take a vote on? Yes. Okay. So, following up on our what's it? What's, let me just see what our minutes from our last time. We we have minutes that said what we voted on last time, right? Yeah. Oh, non document. We agreed to offer support for this initiative sponsored by the local Pioneer Valley Workers Center communicate that we believe this to be a human rights issue and willing to offer what support we can in their effort. Okay, so that's, so I guess, hello. So we didn't, did we didn't vote on this? Um, no, it was not a vote. So should we take a vote and then include initiating with others? Do we need to have the actual text of the initiative, or can we say that we're Yeah, the driver's license. Yeah. So I, I, I move that we, we um, endorse the statewide driver's license for all campaign. But let's get the correct name. I second that. And that we invite other human rights commissions mm -hmm. to endorse it as well. Second half of the proposal. Because we can get to you. And these, because these are our people. And then, Karen, I could email you the official name. Yes. Okay.
then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So, second. All in favor? All right. Thank you, friends.